Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the Potato Windows Box from CyberSec Labs. We get started, as always, with an Nmap scan. We notice we have a couple of ports open and the most interesting port here is 8080 which is running HTTP and it says uh, it's a Jetty HTTP server. So let's take a look at that. Port 8080 on our IP seems to be a Jenkins login. So we can log in and we can try, for example, admin admin. And we will notice that admin admin are valid credentials that work on this website. So now we have access to this uh, Jenkins. Um, and now we can see, well, can we maybe get code execution from here? So then if you go back to the to the uh, collection of sheet sheets that I really like, hack tricks, and you search for Jenkins, you will find that there's three ways to get code execution. And then for the second one, it says it's the best way and the, less, the least noisy way. And we have to go to uh, path Jenkins slash script. So our path for Jenkins is just the root. And then if you do slash script, we will see that we get to the script console where we can enter stuff and run it. And this has these have to be groovy scripts. But luckily, this cheat sheet already gives us a script to run. So let's see. So we're going to create a process and execute it. And then we're going to print the output. So we're going to do PowerShell exe, and then we can, for example, do a who am I? Let's see if this works. So if we run this, we will see that yes, it works, and we are currently running code as Ben. So now we want to get a reverse shell. So for that, again, back to hack tricks. Here under shells for Windows, we can, we can pick one. Uh, and since we're already in PowerShell, let's try running this PowerShell one. So we're going to exec something. Uh, and we're going to get a shell, a PS1 shell, from our web server and then execute that. And the cool thing about this shell that I picked here is that it, the, our file never actually touches the... the, the uh, it never... Um, it's never written on disk, right? So that means that it's very hard to detect and, uh, and, and you don't have to do any cleanup afterwards, which is always nice. So let's see. So we backslash the, the quotes that we have in our in our uh, payload itself. We have to change the IP address to be 10.10.0.8. But then we still have to find a shell that we can use. And for um, PowerShell 1 shells, I really like this one from Nishang, which is a, a one-liner or more a two-liner. So we have these two lines that we have to uncomment and then edit our IP address, which I already did. So if you go to... Let's make this bigger. Reverse, not just reverse. We want to have reverse.ps1. And we can see, okay, I uncomment the lines. I added in my IP address and the port 1234 for those two instances. So now if we start our Python server here, so Python 3-m HTTP.server on port 80. And we go back to here and we run this. We will notice it actually gets the file, which is great. But we forgot one thing: we forgot to have our uh, listener on on that port. I'm gonna wrap the listener with RL wrap, which is going to make the shell easier for me to navigate through, meaning that we, I can use my up and down arrow keys in the shell that we'll get. Uh, and we have to listen on port one two three four, uh, and this has to be in LNVP. So now we're listening on the port. Now if we run this again. We will see it got the file from a web server and we have a connect and we have a PowerShell session here. Now from this PowerShell shell session, um, we can do a lot of stuff. We can, for example, try to run WinPiece, which I've already uploaded. But if you want to know how to upload WinPiece, you can go to pingdraconian.darkcode.com, which is also in the description and say run Win WinPiece. And here we see, okay. In my video on cold, I ran WinPiece and I also uploaded it on the box. So if you want more information on that, you can go there. So now if we try to execute that, we'll notice that nothing happens and our shell breaks. So that's not, not nice and that's something that we don't want happening because we want to be able to run this. So let's um, try to upgrade the shell possibly to a Metropetter shell. So for that, again, I'm not going to uh, walk through exactly what I did, but if you want to know how I did that, uh, on pingdraconian.darkcode.com, 
you can find that in the video on cold and on boats. I did this to get a reverse metapetra shell. So all I'm going to do here is go into my metasploit. We have exploit multi-handler. I'm going to run that so it starts a reverse TCP handler. And then I'm going to run reverse.exe, which I've already uploaded. So here we see, okay, we have a metapetra session that opened. And now we can go into a shell here. And from here, we can run wimpies.exe. And we have to do that with a dot backslash wimpies.exe. And that's going to give us a lot of output. And that's going to be very big. Okay. So scrolling all the way back to the top. Okay. We are somewhere around the top here. You can start looking for things that are interesting. Always take a good look at the red ones. And then here we'll notice for our token privileges, we have SE impersonate per privilege. So then we can follow this link that it has. And this will here SE impersonate privilege. Uh, and then it says any process holding this privilege can impersonate any token for which it's able to get handle. You get a privilege token for a Windows service making it perform an NTLM authentication against the exploit, then execute a process as system. And we can exploit that with Juicy Potato. So Juicy Potato is, is a very common one, something that you really want to try out yourself, play with. So we, you can download the release from here, which will download an exe that you can then upload to the box via, for example, invoke web request. For that, again, if you, go, if you search uploading here, you'll see I have uploaded stuff with various different things, for example, cert util here, um, and that those are all ways to upload stuff. So when you have a juicy potato on the box, so let's see if we have it here, juicy potato.exe, yes, we do have it there, then we can start running it. So let's see, juicy potato, now let's first see the help of what we need to do. So we, we need to have a dash t argument, and we will use star to try everything. Then we will have a program to launch and a COM port to listen on. Now this COM port doesn't really matter what you put there because most ports will work. Uh, so let's play around with that. Uh, but for this program that we're going to want to launch, let's uh, use our reverse.exe binary that we used to get this Metropetter session. And let's get another Metropetter session and hopefully a system here. So we're going to do juicy potato. Then we're going to do dash L for a com port. Let's pick lead. We're going to then do a dash T star. And then our payload, which is going to be users pen dot Jenkins and then reverse dot exe. So if we run that, we will notice that it works and we get a metropolitan session here. If we go into a shell here and do an who am I? We will see that we are now system. So that was this box. Um, juicy potato or rotten potato or whatever you want to call it is a very common thing. It's very good to have played around with this at least a couple of times. So I think this box is a is a must do uh, if you want to get into penetration testing and definitely for Windows. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, as always, leave them below in the comments, and I will see you back for another video.